Welcome back to Channel 37. Today we're going to be talking to you about the exciting new line by our friends Federico and Pedro at Joven Labs. Uh, they're going to be presenting four new exciting modules. There's the Eschico, the Get Wrecked, the Get Good, and the Goblet. I got to know Federico a little bit during Barcelona Modular Day when I interviewed him about their new series of touch modules. Both Federico and Pedro are musicians, performers, and happen to be really passionate about the amalgamation of synth and live performance. And that's really reflected in the type of modules they make, which are feel quite organic, which you can interact with in this very natural way and are extremely playful and, uh, and fun. They also did a really interesting um, sort of artwork, which was based on a flower, which would, um, which would open up and follow the sun and produce sound autonomously. So we're really excited to get to experience some of their uh, ingenuity firsthand with these four modules. I guess you could say that all of their modules have their own distinct kind of personality. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, let's look at what these four modules are. The first one is a Shiko, and they describe a Shiko as a seesaw VCA. Mm -hmm. And a usual VCA just opens and closes the volume on your signal. But this one pings and pongs it between two outputs instead. So you can use it to create a stereo image from a mono source. It's a quad VCA, so you can do this four times or patch them together for more complex modulation. Now I'm gonna tell you how to get wrecked. Well, the get wrecked module is a analog wave shaper and wave folder with aggressive overtones and saturation. Next up is the get good or get gut. I don't know how to call it. Depends on how many beers you've had. So this is what they call a no-net LFO. That means nine LFOs in one package. About half of them are square waves, about half of them are saw waves, and you can flick a switch to chain them in series. Each of these LFOs is equipped with Jolin Lab's distinctive touch potentiometer, which is basically a touch control baked into the PCB to accelerate or decelerate that specific LFO. Finally, the goblet is an analog filter and distortion unit which uses op opto couplers. Is that Correct. Is it opto or octo? Opto coupler. Opto coupler. <laughs> and finally, we have the goblet, which is an analog filter and distortion unit which uses opto coupling to distort. And it also has slide potentiometers as well as touch plates to further mangle the signal. Here's what we got from Jolin Labs. And we decided to do the unboxing with you guys because the packaging is quite beautiful. <laughs> so here's our first baby, the Ashiko. And look how each of the modules is packed in this beautiful cardboard tube and sealed with a Jodling Lab sticker. Let's pop this one. Woo! Look at this! We got some colorful wood chips. Some confetti. Our first Jolin Lab sticker. I have to say the branding is on Dude, point. Dude, it's a tardigrade. This is yeah. the tardigrade sticker. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were out of stock when we were in Barcelona yeah, yeah, much yeah, yeah, This is great. Yeah. And a power cable. And another Jolin Lab sticker. And we got a little bag of parts with drawstring closing. It's all incredibly eco-friendly. And another little bag of parts. And here we got the PCB. I haven't seen any plastic so far. That's great. So what we see here is that all of the SMB parts are pre-soldered, which is convenient. This is where the control hardware goes. And this is the faceplate. We're gonna love building this. Hell yeah. Also note the interesting power header. Only four pins, huh? Mm -hmm. I guess that saves space. Naturally. I loved opening this package to discover that, first of all, there's no plastic, which is amazing, but it's, yeah, the aesthetic appeal of the entire um, brand is really extraordinary. It really shows that they, they care about how the user interacts with their work because of course it's um, 
if it's something that you're interacting with every day or regularly, it should be a pleasant experience on all of the senses. Yeah. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. This feels like a real treat, like luxury bath products, <laughs> yeah, for no, example. Yeah, it does. It honestly, like, it really reminds me of my posh deodorant. <laughs> So we're going to unbox each of these um, in the build videos. And with that in mind, let's take you to the first build of a Shiko. Pop the top of your Shiko container. Underneath the colorful wood shavings, you'll find a front panel, PCB, two small bags of parts, rack screws and a power cable. Place the PCB on your workbench with the markings facing upward. First, place 16 jack sockets. Then, 8 switches. Note that orientation doesn't matter. Next, insert the blue LEDs. The short leg goes in the hole with the square markings. Then, place the red LEDs. in place, wiggle the front panel on. Tack the LEDs down, making sure they don't protrude over the side of the front panel. Then solder all of the switches. Finally, solder all the jack sockets. Our soldering iron is at 370 degrees Celsius and we use 1 mm solder wire. It doesn't take more than a few seconds to make each connection. When you're done, snip the legs off the LEDs. Then, Place all of the nuts on the jack sockets and switches. That's it, your Shiko is done. Now let's build a Get Wrecked. Inside you find some cool stickers, power cable, the pre-soldered front panel, a bag with rack screws and a bag with parts. Just place the four jacks on the front panel. Then solder them in place. Use plenty of solder because it provides stability when you plug in a patch cable. That's all there is to it. Now we'll build the Git Good. Pop your tube. Find your cool stickers, power cable, two bags of parts, and a pre soldered front panel. These are the same solid jack sockets, and we've got our rack screws and switches. First, place all the switches. Gently roll the PCB over and tack one leg in the middle of each switch. This allows you to ensure that they are flush with the front panel. Touch up your work, ensuring the switches are flush. Then solder all remaining legs. Now drop in the jack sockets. Again roll the PCB over and solder each of these with plenty of solder because it fulfills a structural function as well. That's it for your git good. Finally we build the goblet.
This is what's in the packet. Note this celebratory gift wrapping. We've got our stickers, power cable, some rack screws. Then we find the pre-soldered front panel and all of the parts. There's slide potentiometers, jack sockets, a momentary switch, some potentiometers, and VAC trolls. The VAC trolls will be soldered here. To make them SMD compatible, use tweezers to flatten the legs out. Lay them out nice and straight. Check that the legs align with the footprint. Then snip them shorter. There's a dot that indicates the orientation. Make sure to match it to the PCB. Do the same for the other rack troll. Solder one leg first, holding the vac troll in place. Check your work, then solder all remaining legs. Now drop in the two slide potentiometers. Solder one leg first and align them flat with the PCB. Flip them and solder all the remaining legs. Next, solder the momentary switch. Then place all jack sockets. Solder these with plenty of solder. Then place the potentiometers. It's a little wriggly to get all the legs in. Solder all of these in place. Finally, place the rubber caps on the slide potentiometer. That's your goblet done. So that's how you build the modules of the Yakta series. The music that you heard during the build video used all of these modules in different combinations. And we recorded a very brief demo at the end of this video to show you how you can use them in your patches. But first, we're going to review these modules ballroom style. We start with the face category. How do they look? I think they're incredible. Like you can tell that there's a lot of attention to design. I really love how these jacks are inserted on the outside and making it look really punk. But it's, you can really tell that it's oriented for people who are wanting to perform live because it's got this like inviting sort of tactile design um, built in, which I think is really, really creative and innovative. The second category is the crave category. How much do we want them? So I actually really wanted to build something from Jolin Lab ever since we met the guys mm -hmm. uh, in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy that they sent us the kits from this Yakta series to build. Um, they add something really unique, which is these touch potentiometers. And the touch potentiometers feel a little bit more organic than twisting a knob. Mm. And they're also a little bit less predictable, which can be really great if you want to insert a little bit of chaos into your patches. Mm. So I really wanted them because they look unique and because they add this element of unpredictability. Exactly, and I think when from my music making process, I like just experimenting and trying to find really strange sounds that kind of come come up randomly also when I'm composing at the piano and then getting seeking inspiration from those. And I think in within the world of modular, that's a really great tool. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So the next category is groove. Mm -hmm. How do they sound? Yeah, I think they sound really cool and um, yeah, like a lot of this kind of undulating feeling, especially with the, uh, the LFO, it's crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. so what I really like is that they, they sound a little grungy. The star in terms of sound is the goblet filter. That's definitely a very unique sounding filter. Um, it's also a, still a little bit nebulous to me exactly how its controls work and in the demo that I recorded You'll see me plug a patch cable into the wrong jack. Um, 
But the cool thing is, it doesn't even really matter because mm -hmm. it adds a lot of grit. It adds some unpredictability. And that's what you want from a filter. You want it to color your sound in an interesting way. The goblet definitely does that. But keep in mind, this comes at a bit of a cost because if you do want to like hone in on a particular type of sound, it's not exactly clear how you would do that with this filter. Now, with regards to the Ashiko, what's really cool about this is that it's a completely unique take on a VCA. So you can switch these uh, four VCAs to regular VCA duty, but you can also use it as a ping pong VCA and introduce stereo modulation. That's really nice, but extreme stereo modulation doesn't sound super pleasing. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you want to do that, it's good to have like an attenuator. Uh, between your modulator and the Ashiko. So it's a little bit more of a subtle effect. Mm -hmm. But what does combine really nicely is the Git Good with the Ashiko because the Git Good creates these really complex undulations yeah, exactly. because each LFO can influence the next one. Mm -hmm. And that creates a kind of complexity that I only know from the Chaos Batumi. And I haven't seen this kind of complex LFO in a DIY module before. So that's definitely a very good reason to get this Git good. Mm -hmm. The final category is new, which is all about how easy it is to use and uh, build. I would say as far as the build process goes, it looks easy on the outside. I mean, it's all through whole pieces. However, they're very close to each other. And then all around them are tiny, really precise SMD. And so if you're not in this super meditative and really, yeah, practice state, it's going to be really, really hard not to, I don't know, fry some other part next to it. So you have to be really at the top of your game. Uh, at least I, I felt that way when I was working on it. The first one we built was probably the more, more complex one. Yeah. Which sure. was this good good. Yeah. Yeah. That one is a little bit hard to build. Um, I would say they're still quite noob friendly. Yeah. But you have, you have to solder precisely when you're working around really small SMB parts. Um, and also, for example, it's good to know that these parts, they need a little bit of extra solder because it fulfills like a structural role to keep yeah. them in place when you plug different jacks in. Exactly. But as long as you keep that in mind, super easy to get started with these. Mm -hmm. Moreover, if these are like some of your first modules, mm -hmm. you'll have like really complex modulation in your rack. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And as far as like it's, um, yeah, working with these modules for a new, how do you feel that that is? I think they're just really fun. They invite interaction. They have this unpredictability, which is really kind of what motivates a lot of people mm -hmm. to play with your rack. Yeah. So yeah, I think they're just great and they're even better than I expected them to be. Thank you Federico for sending these our way. And just to conclude this video, here's a quick tutorial about how to patch each of them. Let's have a little demo of the modules. I plug a sawtooth wave into the get rect. Then I plug the output into the Ashiko, which goes to my sound card. Covering the rightmost contacts of the disrupt contact potentiometer increases the amount the wave folder affects the signal. Covering the lower two contact points decreases it. The pieces control affects the pulse width of the resulting folded signal. Now I include Git Good in the patch. I take the output of one of the triangle LFOs and patch it into Disrupt. Then I take another triangle LFO and patch it into Pieces. I turn Disrupt and Pieces down a little bit so that we can hear the effect of the LFO. Setting these switches to the up position makes the top LFO affect the speed of the bottom one. Now we get a more complex waveform.
Now, I use another LFO to pan the stereo signal using a Shiko. It sounds better with a triangle LFO. Note that by flicking the bottom switch, I turn it into a dual regular VCA. And by flicking the top switch, you affect the crossfader characteristic of the stereo panning. Up is a softer panning setting than down. Now we include the goblet in the patch. Note that I accidentally patched the signal into the accent input, but it seems to work anyway. I was using the accent input. Are the Yakta modules? <laughs> 